many children in the United States who like to write to their president. He's someone very special to them. They write to him as if he were an uncle or an old friend of the family. There's a constant stream of pen pal notes to the president. Each one an honest letter that only the very young can write. home, the White House, and he and his secretarial staff take time to read and answer as many as they can. Asked about children's letters, President Nixon once said, many years ago I came across a statement I have never forgotten. Children make us philosophers. That statement seems to me to capture the importance and delight of the letters that children write to the president. It reminds us that the things children say in their own kind of wisdom help us to re-examine the world. There is sense and comedy, sadness and fantasy, delight and profundity in what they have to say. Dear Mr. President, do you like your White House? Do you have any bakers at your house? Too much yeast! You, you put in too much yeast! Have you got a bathroom in your house? Do you have any sacks in your house to put your garbage in? The exploration of space catches the curiosity of the young. Mr. President, when the astronauts get back, ask them if they cut the cow that's been jumping over the moon all these years. Mr. President, I saw you call the moon on TV Sunday night. I called the operator and asked to call the moon. She said, when you get the number, I will get you through. This is an unlisted number. Hello there, Mr. President. Many children have special stories about their pets that they think will be of interest to the president. Mr. President, do you have a pet? If you have a dog, get rid of it. Because we have a dog and he's a nut. Who can't sleep? You can't do anything with that dog. You got the tooth I sent you? I have a lot more teeth. Please don't send them back. I got them all over the house. Some letters show a serious concern for the environmental problems of the world. I am only a 13-year-old, but I have started an organization. This organization has cleaned up two miles of debris just on a road of ours, which filled the city dump truck. We have 79 more miles of debris to pick up. We only picked up two miles of debris because it was a cold day, and only seven people showed up out of 45. If you would appoint me head of the whole state of Wisconsin Teenage Rubbish Club, we could have a lot more cleanliness in this whole United States. To the president. Dear sir. I would like to know how to be a hero. Please 
with a note. Dear Mr. President, on our Easter trip, we had lots of fun. We brought our cat named Wooshkit. The first night we camped at a place where Hollywood filmed Water Hole Number Three. The next night, we camped at a windy place in Death Valley Monument. We brought a tent, and as we were going to put the stakes in, so it wouldn't blow away, a big wind came along and our tent blew away. But finally, we brought back our tent. The next night, we ate mushed potatoes and beef stew. The fourth night, we camped at a place and we heard some owls. the rain the last night. Dear sir, if I were president, I would help people that can't walk and can't talk and can't hear and can't write. I would help people that can't see. I would help the schools. I would help teachers. I would help children. I would help men. I would help women. I would help babies. I would help Cub Scouts. I would help dentists. I would help zoos. I would help lions. An older girl sent this school essay to the president. This is America, the land of beauty, filled with bubbling laughter and hope of opportunity. Men scan the ocean bottom and soar through black and empty space search of something. I call to everyone, look to youth, America's backbone. I have the stamina, energy, and bright, alert ideas awakening. My buds will make tomorrow brighter if they are watered with tenderness and mellowed with kindness and understanding today. All of these things tied together by one wheat strand and stuffed in a kernel of corn which are carted through dark coal mines and over steep mountains or what America means to me. Other writers are direct and to the point. They have something to say, and they say it quickly. Dear Mr. President, Boy, is it rainy in Arizona. Dear Mr. President, I have six sisters and one brother. Add it up and it's seven. But add me up too and it's eight. Our house is pretty crowded. We have a dog, too, on our parents, and we only have a little house, but we all fit in it. Dear Mr. President, is there a square tree in Ohio? Do willow trees weep? I wonder if you'd please do something for my mother. You see, every morning after my two brothers wake up to go to school, they leave their room a big mess. I would like to know if you would please declare my brother's room a disaster area. Dear Mr. President, what is your favorite sport? Mine is eating. <laughs> Mr. President, dear sir, if you want a free kitten, you can have your pick of a white one with a spot on its forehead or a black one with blue eyes. P.S. I wrote this letter to get rid of a few cats. Dear Mr. President, I'm afraid to go to school. Could you get me a pass to become a teacher? 
and have my teacher become a pupil. Dear Mr. President, my father got your autograph for me, which I keep in my own safe. Under 50 books, in a bag, in a plastic bag, under a wallet, and in a secret compartment of another wallet. If you have any problems in math, call 474-6215. Dear Mr. President, I am in the fifth grade. We have just finished writing about all the duties of the president. My arm almost fell off. Dear Mr. President, the next time you're on TV, would you wish me a happy birthday? Through these letters to the president, we can see some of the hope, faith, and trust that abounds in the hearts of the young. We can all gain in some measure from the wisdom of children. Your letter, I just about fell over flat. <laughs>